Sometimes you got to take a step back for a major comeback. At theafricansuperstar.com, we believe in African pride. We believe in resilience and we believe in flexing. Our new collection, African Superstar X Ghana, is comprised of over 200 new styles for men and women. Styles that will enhance your confidence. Styles that will make you stand out. Styles that will demonstrate your love for the continent. By us, for us. You can rest assured when you shop at theafricansuperstar.com that your product is going to be high quality, long lasting, vibrant, and comfortable. We look forward to you shopping with us today. www.theafricansuperstar.com Bringing Africa to you. What's up, African Superstar family? It's Gina Ifoe, the one and only African Superstar. I'm actually getting ready to head to the gym. Um, I was kind of requested to do this video. Obviously, I've unfortunately lost a lot of my moving to Ghana content, so I will be doing some of these videos over. And today I want to talk about five things you need before you move to Ghana slash Africa, okay? Um, five very important things that I actually took time to put into place. Um, I know it's popular for people nowadays in 2021 to pick up and move to the continent without any preparation, but I highly discourage against that. I believe that you need to exercise a bit of a process to make sure that your time here on the continent will be successful. So these are five things I think that you should take time to look into. Number one is immigration, okay? Um, For instance, here in Ghana, you must apply for a visa if you are not a citizen to enter the country. Ghana does not currently offer a widespread visa on arrival service. Uh, From what I understand in some, you know, extenuating circumstances and things like that, they will do a visa on arrival, but it's not the same process as some other countries like Kenya and Egypt where you can just travel there, purchase your visa, and go. You need to investigate immigration before you come to Ghana or before you head to the continent. Um, Once you arrive here, you will want to investigate in residency or citizenship once you have gotten here, you know, because you don't want to just be here on a visa. From what I understand, visas require you to leave the country after so many months or so on and so forth. So that can get expensive, that can be tedious. You need to establish yourself here in the country if you plan on living here via residency permits, via citizenship, okay? Um, When I first came here, you know, in regards to my moving here, um, I purchased a two-year visa from the UK. However, when I got here, I was able to get a residency permit that I was assisted through St. Kofa Repatriation. They offer a lot of diasporian services, you know, in regards to your immigration, housing, land, all that kind of stuff. Um, So, you know, both my sister and I were able to get our residency permits through St. Kofa Repatriation's assistance, okay? Um, I recommend that you don't buy land here, you know, until you sort that out. Um, There are several elders that have pointed that out as far as people not getting themselves, you know, legally in the system and starting businesses, starting buying land, starting projects. And then, you know, if your immigration doesn't work out now, you have already started investing in the area and you you don't have any ties. You don't have any justification to it. Uh, No legal recourse. So that's very, very important. Number two, streams of income. Okay. Um, this is something I understood upon my first visit in Ghana, which is I don't necessarily want to have a job in Ghana, um, nor is it really likely because, you know, the market here is very competitive. You have lots of educated young African professionals that are emerging into the market from school. Um, and then second of all, you know, according to like, our quality of life that we're accustomed to from the West and the type of salaries that we're accustomed to receiving, you know, local salaries were not going to be comparable to that currently at this time. So I made the decision to have 
other streams of income, such as setting up my YouTube channel, such as theafricansuperstar.com. Um, I also put into place having those streams of income ongoing for at least a year before coming down here. So I received income from both of those avenues before coming here. Um, so I felt a bit more confident that, okay, you know, some people are picking up and coming here and thinking, okay, once I get to Ghana, I'm going to start my business. That's a lot of pressure and a lot of weight. So that means immediately when you come here, um, you really haven't given yourself any time to transition. You're already in need of income, you know, or will be in a month's time or two months time. That is very, very risky. So I would advise that you set up something, you know, at minimum, you, you, you run it and function it for six months, <laughs> you know, in addition to maybe some savings, anything can happen. Um, obviously my platform got taken. You guys know the story. Um, unforeseen things can happen. So you really just don't want to be in that kind of position where any little cough, any little mishap, and now you no longer can sustain yourself on a continent and so on and so forth. Um, number three is housing. Okay. You need to work out where you're going to live. Okay, this is another powerful reason of why you need to visit the continent before moving down. Um, we are accustomed to an online world in the West. Okay, we're used to Google. We just type in, oh, I want an apartment on the north side of town. I want an apartment in London. I want an apartment in Atlanta. And we kind of just go from there. I mean, in many cases, we can do everything from start to finish online. You know, buying cars, we can buy online, shopping, getting groceries. You know, that's the world that we live in in the West. That, you know, is not currently the reality here on the continent. You need to be involved in your housing process. Now, I did utilize a website called Mikasa.com to find my apartment here in Ghana. However, I didn't do any financial transactions until I was here on the ground. And I actually had a, a very close Ghanaian friend corresponding with the agent and came along with me to view the property and ultimately helped me negotiate the rent. Okay. Um, I know we're very independent in the West. We're used to doing everything on our own. Please don't set yourself up for scams. Okay. Get someone tried and true to go through, uh, you know, pick the brain of someone who's been through the process and so on and so forth. Um, I were actually settled on the very first apartment that I had picked out. I had selected about three, um, on the Mikasa website, all of them were in the East Lagon area. I chose East Lagon obviously because of convenience, because I was familiar. Um, I felt safe here, you know, so on and so forth. Um, and the, at the very first one I went to, you know, my friend was like, look, this is the best deal. You know, I don't know what other rooms you got, but I think this is a great deal, great location, so on and so forth. So trusting the judgment, I didn't even view the other properties. I just went ahead and uh, went with the room I have. So housing is important. Some people want to buy immediately when they get here. Again, all that requires research, you know. Um, as someone who didn't, you know, re grow up in Ghana, I don't know the demographics. I don't know all the cultural norms and things like that. For me to come from the outside, just immediately buy land and try to start a process, not knowing my surroundings, that's very risky. Some are doing it, but for me, I thought, <laughs> let me get an apartment, get to know Ghana a bit better, and then go from there, okay? My fourth point is transportation. You know, um, you need to determine how you're going to get around. Uh, we, you know, me living in both America and then moving to Europe, you know, the transport, the public transportation is very accessible, especially in, you know, Europe. Um, there's trains, there's buses, there's, you know, whatever, subways. Um, so you can get around without a car and things like that. Depending on where you are on the continent, you may need a car. Or in my case, I chose to live in a city so I can actually use uh, Uber car services and bulk car services. I don't really want to have a car here, to be honest. I feel like if I get a car here, I should be able to also have a driver to go with the car. So until that day comes, um, I will be using private cars to go around. Uh, we do have local transportation, which are called trotros, uh, which are, you know, van vehicles that kind of stop along the way and take you. But as someone who's not a local, that one can be challenging because the mark, the stops are not always clearly marked. The destination of the trotro is not always clearly marked. Sometimes people are speaking 
the local languages, you know, they're speaking tree or they, you know, you may not be able to understand. If you're someone who doesn't know where you're going, that's also a challenge. You know, you get onto the trotro, they're saying, well, where do you need to go? Where are you getting off? And you don't really know. Um, so, you know, me personally, I've probably taken a trotro a handful of times since I've been here and I've actually been accompanied by my girl, Ty Inspire, who is a trotro expert now. Yeah, but, um, you know, transportation, take into consideration transportation. If you decide to ship in your vehicle, make sure you know how much that costs. Um, I've heard sob stories of people, you know, bringing their cars all the way to Africa, getting it to the port or getting it to customs and they can't afford to get it cleared. They can't afford to get their car, um, stuff like that. You know, there's an issue with the car by the time it's been transported, you know, I don't know. Transportation. Okay. And number four is cultural norms and network links. Okay. I can't say this enough. Um, if you move here as a foreigner and you don't know anybody, you will struggle. You know, you will struggle. Um, establishing network links is powerful. Even if you begin to associate with maybe those country people in your destination. So let's say you live in Germany and you're interested in moving to Kenya. From what I understand, there's a, a relatively large Kenyan population in Germany. Associate with them, you know, learn Swahili, get to know the food, you know, see if they can link you with people, trusted people once you make the transition or things like that. Or if you're making frequent travels to the continent, make sure you make network connections while you're there. You know, all of these are tips that I did over the course of, you know, Four years for what, what, like, wait, yeah, that's it. Four years because my first trip was 2016 to Ghana and I moved in 2020. So, everything that I, you know, I did all these things to actually build up to me moving here ultimately in 2020. So, I hope these tips have been helpful. I know in particular there's there's one uh, young lady from the UK that's looking for this information. So I wanted to provide this video to kind of outline and be more specific about five things you need before moving to Ghana slash Africa. I don't care which country you're going to. These things is a playbook of how to succeed on the continent, okay? Please make sure you like, share, and subscribe this video. Make sure you hit up theafricansuperstar.com. Go get some merch. Support the stream. Until we meet again, stay black and true. If you ain't black, just stay true.